My moment has arrived. My time is now. Will I follow through or will I cower and bow? A specter is haunting us. Its evil no longer lay. It threatens our traditions. It must be driven away. Sun Tzu tells us that in the midst of chaos, there is also opportunity. I must seize this opportunity and unsheath my father's blade. Forged from the strongest metal, it will guide me along the way. Let the tip enter his chest, but plunge it to the hilt. Cast the Akuma from the land our emperor has built. All right, let's do the raffle. Today, this is for the David Parker Ray case from last week. All right, so for last week's raffle, we have 12 entries. Choose winner now. And... All right. All right, choose winners now. Marty. Marty. Marty Bass. Congrats. Congratulations. Marty Bass, thank you so much for entering. I'll send that to you ASAP. So, all right, we got some good comments too. I'm not going to go through them because we're going to try to get this story out right here. But you may have noticed last week that I put a bunch of snippets on YouTube. I'm starting that up this year. I'm going to try to do that every time. So this story, there, there'll be some good snippets on there too for you guys. So tonight we're doing a special request for Nicole's sister, Danielle. Oh. Ooh. And I know she's not in Japan anymore. No, they just got back to the States. They just got back. She happy to be back? Very happy. Very, very, Things very Things are happy. going well in Tennessee so far? So far, so good. People are nice. They've they got their express shipment anyway, so you know, good. It's going well. Oh, we almost forgot. We did almost forget to do a surprise shop, um, which is for everyone. Merry Christmas, Merry guys. Christmas. No, let's do it for Santa, so he can be really fucking drunk when he's flying over. <laughs> Santa gets a DUI. <laughs> I think. I don't. I wonder if they have a. What's that one Santa song? It's like I saw my mom in bed with Santa. Uh, no, that's or something like that. <laughs> I that's saw not mommy kissing Santa Claus. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought it was like my which m- I definitely had a problem with when I was a child. That song, you know, I was like, yeah. oh my god, mom's cheating on dad with Santa. Like, why are we condoning this behavior as a society with this song? Only you oh, would have thoughts oh, like oh, that. Oh. Like, only you would go that in depth. <laughs> about being concerned about that everyone here else over here present. oh my god stop <laughs> dick in a box <laughs> oh, I take see a your... look inside it's a dick in a box um yeah you know then there was a dr demento version of i saw daddy kissing santa claus oh um but you know other than grandma got run over by a reindeer there really is no um song that addresses santa getting a dui and maybe we should write one. Well, he wouldn't get a DUI. He would get a FUI, flying under the influence. <laughs> okay, so we'll fui. <laughs> Which doesn't sound as good <laughs> as Dewey. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're still trying to get that one to catch on. <laughs> um, but we will maybe work on that for next year, and it'll be a hit. And I'll pay off my student loans with it. Anyway, for this song, um, still looking for royalties, but that's okay. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to steal that. <laughs> That's the new intro. <laughs> Surprise shots. Surprise shots. We don't know what they are because they're a surprise. You know, I kind of like how the, the shot glasses. Uh, no, let me say not kind of. I definitely like how these shot glasses are not clear. So you can't tell what's in them because yes. I can see the color that yours is in that shot glass. And I'm like, mm, uh, I don't think I'm going to like this. Ed, you'll be OK. Cheers, y'all. Cheers, Mary Christmas. No, I'm not. Uh, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Dude, what the I'm fuck? I'm not going to like this. Uh, Cheers. Okay. This is tequila. No. Wild turkey. No! Oh my god, it burns so bad. Ugh. It's good if you have a sore throat. Ugh. It'll help soothe it. That's yeah, what they, it, they put it in hot toddies. It, I, would, I wouldn't hate it in a hot toddy, but ugh. I haven't had a hot toddy in a very long time. All right, tonight we are going to Japan. 
And take a look at this guy. What year do you think this guy? 1954. He looks diabolical. Uh, 1937. 1962. You already guessed, Jen. <laughs> I thought we were going back and uh, forth. <laughs> All right. This guy, he's evil looking, man. Yeah, he, he looks he looks like a villain. Yeah, from James Bond. Yes, or yeah. yes. Which is just, just talking about. With he your just dad. needs a cat simulating petting the evil cat. I wasn't sure He's what you were doing. Half a cat on there. He probably There's ate the rest of the cat. Oh my god! Stop it. They do that over there, don't they? I know. Well, no, I think that's China. No. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I don't want to comment on something that I'm not totally mm. sure of. All right, so uh, this guy, and I'll put these. YouTube clip it's on. I'm, I'm going to get better at that, I promise. But if you you can go to Talk More to see all these photos. I literally have tears in my eyes after that shot. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't want to judge. I'm not judging. But, like, we've been doing this for so long. Like, how? Ugh. I just don't like straight whiskey, man. It's just, <sighs> ugh. You should have sipped it instead of... No, you should have... Next time, we'll just put a tampon in there and have it soak up so she can suck on the tampon. <laughs> no, it would be like an interesting boofing. lollipop. Oh, God. Boofing. I think I would prefer that oh, in, in shit. this instance. I'll do I'll I'll boof. If y'all have, if you give me a challenge okay, for okay. something, I'll boof the entire but, episode. But hang on. Here's the thing. It's, it's, it, you've got a different boofing hole than Jen and I do. So no, oh. no you put it, you don't put it in your vagina. No, no, yeah, no. Boofing is the same for everyone. Equal oh. opportunity yeah. boofing. Oh. You put boofs in your boots. Oh yeah. I, f- I forgot about that. You're I'm, thinking about the proper use of a tampoon. Yeah. If you guys have a challenge for all three of us, who and is I'm somewhat, not putting no. anything up my butt. I'm not Hang agreeing on. to that. Yeah, no, no, I'm not agreeing I'm not to that. I'm not putting anything up my butt. But <laughs> I think it's an interesting that you volunteered that's, that right away. Yeah, I would. Um, that's not I what mean, you said last get, night. We have a, <laughs> if we have a challenge that you want to challenge us, I think if John loses said challenge, his thing can be boofing. But I will not no. boof. No, me here's mm-hmm. here. This for the pie is your job. So it's my no. job to boo. If somebody presents uh-huh. us with a good challenge that all three of us can compete with each other in, the loser would have to boof an entire episode. And boofing no. includes putting no. whiskey on a tampoon and shoving it up your no. boots. No. Nope. We'll not agree to. Nope. No. no, nothing's going. No. Also, you do. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm just not going to say it right now, but no. The only thing that's ever going to go what? up my boots is a colonoscopy. Okay, a tampon cert. expands. Yes. So, Ew, gross. yeah, that, that would hurt a lot taking it out. Yeah. Of your boots? Yes. Yeah. What does it? It would hurt. You'd have it to take some lot. muscle relaxers. It would no. hurt a lot. You'd probably end up in the ER. Mm. That would be quite the story. <laughs> Could you imagine the the ER tech that that's like talking to their family at dinner time or talking to their friends in the break room on break? Yeah, this guy just came in. He had a tampon stuck up his asshole, soaked in whiskey. I'm gonna open up a boofing bar. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that is kind of a great idea because I'm sure people are into that. Yeah, but. maybe in like a red leg district or something, like Somerville. All right, tonight we are going to Japan. We're going to October 12th, 1960. So if this is your first time here, this is the, if this is your first time here, this is the Talk Murder to Me podcast. My name is John. I'm sitting here with Jen and Nicole. Tonight's story is exceptional. It actually has a photo that will go down in the annals. Oh, I see what you did there. (laughs) Of, (laughs) Of history in general. This is... A Pulitzer Prize winning photo. Oh. This photo? No, not this photo. I was going to say, it is a great photo. Oh, yeah, of it's a the nice guy. portrait. Yeah. yeah. The photo you're going to see is an action shot. And I'm going to actually show you the video because it was viewed by millions and it, it the, the whole video is here of the murder. I'm going to show you that first, but. And there's a, there's a lot of movement in the video. So the photo is taken and once you see the photo you'll understand why it's a masterpiece you know how they call it, some you know how some art you see and you just you just understand right away it's a masterpiece uh-huh. like um 
like the scream mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. You understand it's a masterpiece. This photo, you just understand it's a Pulitzer Prize winner. Okay. Like automatically. But anyway, we're going to 303. It's either 303 or 305 p.m. Okay. I got two conflicting sources there. Huh. I know that's a long time apart. Um, well, if you didn't say that, someone would have said it's 305. But actually. also, I mean, like if you're into astrology, you know, the exact time of your birth is important. So it does matter. 534 a.m. Really? I was 420 because your mom was smoking the dubs <laughs> <laughs> in the Denny's bathroom. It's like, Oop, there's Jen. <laughs> oh, shit. In the toilet. <laughs> Did y'all see the snoop on a stoop? Yes. No. Thanks. Yeah, they also have Blanche on a ranch. That's like funny. Like Blanche <laughs> from Golden Girls riding a bottle of ranch dressing. That's awesome. All right. I thought about getting it. You know what? I'm going to cut it in half. We're going to 3.04 p.m. All right. Close. <laughs> That's a good compromise. October 12th, 1960. Jen, you may have seen this on Tic Tac. I know somebody posted on Tic Tac and I think it got like 12 likes or something. Anyway... Because, you know, it's black and white and people don't like history. They like rappers. Well, did you know that the new... They like rappers that, that d destroy like an entire arena and I don't know what happened. Well, Denzel Washington has a new version of... Not a new <laughs> version. A version... Uh, a new Macbeth movie out and it was shot entirely in black and white. Hmm. So that they're still making like, black and white films. Yeah, if you, low budget. All right, tonight we're going to October 12th, 1960, 3.04 p.m. There were a 1,000 people in attendance. This is at the Habia Hall. This is in Tokyo. Okay. And back in the day, I don't know if it, I don't know why it changed, or if maybe this was just some American newspapers, but they would spell Tokyo, T-O-K-I-O, instead of hmm. Y-O. Interesting. I saw that in a few American newspapers. Oh. Huh. But we are going to the Habia Hall, which is still there to this day. It's a, a big concert theater. And there was a political debate going on. And give us a brief right quick about 1960. What do you think the atmosphere was like in Japan? Obviously, there was something that happened 15 years prior. Right. The war ended. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but the, bomb. the bomb. bombs, right? From what I don't actually believe that happened. Oh, I'm stop a, it. I'm a bomb denier. Oh, God. <laughs> bomb That's, denier. Are there, is that even a thing? I didn't know that was a thing. Well, <laughs> are we talking about in American culture or Tokyo, uh, Japanese culture or both? No, uh, Japanese culture. Yeah. We, well, I think we're, we've we're, covered we're, this before, right? Weren't the kid like there was that whole generation of that spawned anime, like the kids didn't yeah, they want. Were, they right. Were, yeah. Mm. You got to refresh my memory, but we've talked about that on a previous case. That So the kids in Japan at the time, she's talking about after the war ended, we bombed Japan. They did sort of like what we did with the hippie revolution where everyone was protesting war and especially the young generation. It was exactly the same as ours, except for, you know, Jimi Hendrix and all the music we were listening to. I don't think they had that sort of culture there, so they turned to children's cartoons, and they started defying their parents by watching children's cartoons. And this is 30-year-old kids, or, you know, 20 to 30, whatever. And that spawned anime, what we know today as anime. So it's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you a question. Was Japan at that time, 1960, pro or, pro or against America? I think they were working to improve relations. That's when Kennedy came into office and into the presidential. Um, I'm going to say pro because I think we had established bases at this point. Okay. Not that that matters, but you know what I mean. So who you're seeing on the screen right now is the person that was talking. He was at the podium. His name is Inahir Inejiro and Suma. Asanuma. Asanuma Inejiro. He was a high-level socialist leader. So at the time, you had two camps with Japan, and we'll get into this a little bit, but you had the pro-democracy, America comes over, installs democracy, 
because before that it was a like a feudal system and burned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah yeah so it was yeah it went to a like a militaristic society then it goes to the emperor which is going to be very important in this case and then it go it society in general is what i mean turns more to the democratic american ideals capitalism and all that stuff however you have a large percent of the population that were trying to adopt communism and that's through china mm. so this is a very a very delicate situation i mean their their entire culture is unbalanced at this point i talked about this before but in japan even during the second world war when they went to fight america and even the soviet union the mothers would actually give their sons a dagger when they you know how a mother sends the son off to war Mm -hmm. the mother would give the son a dagger and say if you get caught use this to kill yourself that was the culture at the time Mm -hmm. i think it's fucking awesome mindset there's actually a lot of a lot of cases that after the war was over there were still fighters that refused to believe that Japan had given up. Mm-hmm. And I remember... Because that's so against... Yeah, so I remember... Because before, before... The emperor tells the Japanese soldiers, if... Like, you will not give up. This is going to be a war. If Japan loses the war, from what their mindset was... That would mean there was no Japan left. There was there was literature saying that if it got to it, the women and children would be fighting with bamboo sticks. Mm. The last every Japanese person in Japan would die for their country. That is the mindset that mm-hmm. which is a fucking great mindset mm-hmm. to have, dude. Yeah. You, you know don't what I'm saying? get that today, though. Fuck no. You never no. get that shit today. But anyway. So that's that is the political climate we're going in. So that that kind of prefaces what you're about to see, and this shit is fucking crazy. So you definitely want to see this on talkmore.com. I'll put the video, a giphy, and the actual still photo that won the Pulitzer Prize. But anyway, 3:04 p.m. October 12th, 1960, 1,000 people sitting, Hibiya Hall, everyone's yelling at you know communism, down with communism, and the other side, you know. F you or whatever they say in Japan. The socialist leader right here, Asanuma, and he was striving to improve relationships with China because he wanted to adopt communism. Mm -hmm. He is up talking and he just starts his speech. Somebody in the crowd shouts, quote, shut up, communist, down with Peking, end quote. Now, You'll see in the video, he puts his arm up to kind of silence them. You know, when someone shouts out, Mm -hmm. when a public speaker is speaking, he's like, okay, okay, you know, whatever. So his arm is up. To his left, this socialist leader, quote, turned casually, then gasped in horror. For there, running at him full tilt, was Otoya Yamaguchi, holding his father's samurai sword. Before him, in wow, quote. wow. So, this is the fucking video. This shit is fucking crazy. Socialist chief Enajiro Asanuma, one of the leaders of opposition to the Japanese American Security Treaty, is marked for death in moments under an assassin sword. A fanatic student rushes on stage and stabs him in the chest. So, you'll see a, a better photo of the actual insertion of the sword. But what did you see there? You saw a mass load of people. Mm -hmm. Now, the Pulitzer Prize photo isn't taken until all those people are trying to rip this assassin, this Otoya, off of the socialist leader. And that is why it is a Pulitzer Prize, because he's actually going in for a second stab. And that is not just a stab wound. It's an 11 inch deep through the entire chest. Out the back, 11 inches out the back. He's pretty much dead on the spot. Okay, this is the video right here, and I'll put this on talkmore.com. This is the actual video. 
選挙の際には国民に信を問わないその時には You hear people yelling.、Yeah. Yeah. People are fucking frustrated because they do not want to go to communism、right. from Japan. Now, it wasn't communism before. It was, I don't know what they were doing. It, it was like an authoritarian, but it wasn't full communism.、Mm. Are、right, you see? Put his hands up right there.、Mm-hmm. Okay. Look at that. Oh my、Whoa. God. You see that?、Yeah. Do you see the force、yeah. that he ran into the guy? That's the assassin right there. You, you guys, you have to see this on talkmore.com. This is、wow. fucking, this will change your life.、Mm. This is the Giphy somebody made. It's perfect. But you see the force,、Whoa. you see the sword going right into his stomach. It's like right、stomach. under the rib cage、yeah. on、mm-hmm. the side. But look, no, you at, see it come out the other side. Look how、wow. fast, look how fast he's going into,、yeah. into this socialist leader. That is how much hatred. And emotion he's putting into it. I mean, he's, it's not like the Kennedys or Saran Saran where, or anyone else, even、uh, Lee Harvey or Oswald, where you can shoot afar and maybe get away. This guy was going in knowing、mm-hmm. that his life is over. And he is, I mean, look at him. He's going straight in. That is straight hatred right there. So isn't that fucking crazy? Yeah. This is a Pulitzer Prize winning photo right here. I'm going to show you. And I'll put this on talkmore.com. But this is right after this incident. So he tries to unsuccessfully stab him again. Then he was taken down. He didn't need to, but he didn't know this. But、right. this one wound right here, all the way through the fucking stomach, literally,、Jesus. you see it going right in. Perfect. Tore up all his internal. internal、oh, yeah. Internal organs shredded them all to shreds. This is the Pulitzer Prize winning photo right here. Oh, wow. Wow. That was after he was stabbed already. He's going in for a second time. Wow. Is that not the perfect photo? That's incredible. That's、What、an amazing shot. shot. Yeah. yeah. So he's like looking kind of down. He's not looking into the eyes of this guy. No, he's looking at he's where he's going to stab、yeah. him next. He is completely foc- ninja focused, if you will. Yeah. Just completely on point.、Mm-hmm. How, what do you guys think about that? Fucking crazy, that right? That is. Fucking crazy. So this socialist leader, he barely opens his mouth. Someone shouts, Shut up, communist, down with Peking to his left. He turns casually, gasp in horror, for there running at him full tilt was Otoya holding his father's samurai sword before him. Asunuma held his arms to ward off the attack, but death was already upon him. End quote. Wow. That is from the, the, those words. Wow. How, how long did he <laughs> well, he did was, take? The, the, hos- the hospital was too. Blocks away, and he was dead before he even left、wow. the parking lot. He、wow. was pretty much dead after that. There's nothing you can do. It tore off every, all of his organs, his, his colon, kidneys. I mean, you saw it go right through、yeah. all that stuff, straight cut. But I wouldn't have、uh, like, automatically assumed him to die that quickly because it wasn't in the heart or anything like that. But yeah, that, I mean, yeah. It, that、Just、was a、shocked. big sword、yeah. that went. Well, it actually is not、Straight、a huge sword. Straight through his. Look, if you look、stomach. at the sword, the size of a subway sandwich. Yeah. Jesus Christ! You eat a subway sandwich that tall? That's like a twelve incher. I think. Yeah. It, no, I think this. It's a foot long. It's a this, foot long. That's true. This sword is thirteen inches long. Now the sword is not a samurai sword, and I'll get into what it is. This sword is actually banned in Japan, right here.、Mm. Oh wow! The assassin lowered his head. So, we can have a lower center of balance, as you see right there.、Mm-hmm. This socialist leader backed into the podium. He drove the sword with his entire body weight. Do you see how? Let, let me go back. His entire body weight is there.、Yeah. Like every, every amount of energy he could muster, it was going straight into him. Look at that. Just straight, just trained him. Yep. Like a fucking freight train, just right into him. Wow. Fucking nuts, right? Now, Did you say, I'm sorry, did you say how old he was? Which the one? Assassin or the assassin? The assassin, 17. Wow, really? The socialist leader, 61. Now, what you probably can't tell because we're not Japanese, but the assassin, the Atoya, he is wearing a school uniform. So all the papers said a student. And there、wow. were a lot of student protesters at this point. 
This photo was a Pulitzer Prize winning photo by Yusushi Nagayo. The photo was taken directly after the assassin stabbed Asanuma, and here is attempting a second stab, although he was restrained before that could happen. It says that uh, the, the, the photographer pointed his camera at the pair just before he plunged his weapon into Asanuma for a second time. The resulting image won a Pulitzer Prize in 1961. In this stunning photograph, Asunuma's collapsing body hovers just above his own name written on a political banner at the back of the stage. So right below his arms is his name. Kind of crazy. Mm. Huh. What do you guys think of all this shit? Nuts, right? That's it wow. is, Yeah, that's crazy. I, the, I was asking his age. I mean, obviously not since he was only 17, but I was asking because like maybe this is a war tactic that he would like trained for oh, interesting or you know did he did he that's a good question actually his father was a very high-ranking official a general mm. in the the military in japan so that also comes up now this guy is super right wing for democracy it took me a, it took me a long time to figure out exactly his ideals but you have Japan splitting up their tr- the the th- thousands and thousands of years of emperor, the shogun, all this stuff. You I mean you see in movies how mm-hmm. the, the tradition that is now being split up during this time. That right. is very stressful and turbulent for everyone. Mm-hmm. So you have people like Atoya trying to promote the U.S. to come in bring democracy which is which is why they're called ultra right wing over there because what the fuck did u.s just do we just bombed the shit out of Mm -hmm. them 15 years ago now he wants to you know what i'm saying most of the japanese people didn't want anything to do with america at that point you know obviously fuck i saw one paper quote it and this is the best quote i've ever seen these times were like a quote fragile lotus blossom Mm. end quote now, this is uh, from the News and Observer, Thursday, November 3rd, 1960. So this is a, a little less than a month later, if you want to read this. Young assassin takes own life in Japan prison. Oh. Police said the body of the young fanatic who stabbed Socialist Party chairman Inajiro Asanuma October 12th was still warm when found at 8.30 p.m. Artificial respiration was applied in vain. They actually applied artificial respiration for three hours, which mm. I don't know if I believe. That's kind of excessive, I feel like. S- yeah. Scribbled on his cell wall was the following quote. Sichichi, I don't know, I'm, I'll put it on talkmore.com, but it says the translation is to serve one's country for seven lives. Hmm. Long live the emperor. So that was on his walls. That was on the wall scribbled with toothpaste. Oh, and then he stands on the toilet, he takes bed sheets, he uh, strips down the bed sheets, you know, like mm-hmm. you tear them and they strip mm-hmm. like bacon. And then he wraps around his neck, stands on the toilet, puts it around a light aperture, which is a fucking ceiling light, and then he just, you know, hangs yeah. himself. Mm-hmm. So. so he killed himself not even a month later. It is sometimes difficult to comprehend the extreme sacrifices the Japanese made in the name of the emperor. This can perhaps be best viewed, however, as extreme patriotism. Japanese were taught to give their lives if necessary for their emperor. But this was not entirely different from the Americans who gave their lives in the same war for their country and the American way. The kamikaze pilots who were named for the divine wind kamikaze that destroyed the Mongol fleet in the 13th century and saved Japan from invasion might be compared to the young Iranian soldiers fighting in suicide squadrons in the Iran-Iraq War of the 1980s, or even to the fanatical Shiites responsible for the truck bombing of the U.S.-Lebanese embassy in 1983. The, the suicide was actually an act of awabi, and that is a Japanese term. There's apparently 20 different ways to apologize in japan and one of them is killing yourself <laughs> it's fucking huh. crazy <laughs> that is I, japanese culture is so <laughs> fascinating i wonder if that's why they have the suicide forest over there like if people are pr- like when they go into the 
Um, well, we have that same thing, the Golden Gate Bridge. Well, yeah, but I mean, yeah, I know what you're saying. They though. Ha- like if they go, if they go to the to the suicide forest, we to, should go in there, all three of us, uh, and spend a couple of days. How are we gonna get there? Oh yeah, you're right. If we were there, you know, like you, you know, they require you. Well, not require you, but you're supposed to take string with you, a big roll of string. And tie it to a tree when you first walk in so they can at least find your dead body when you end up, you know, because they'll just yeah. follow the string. See, you know me about like spirits, not a fan. <laughs> so I would have to decline the invitation. But, you know, I'll FaceTime with you when you guys go. Nope, I don't think we're going. So it's cool. If you want to read this, this is from the uh, Time, Time magazine. In a bleak cell at a Tokyo juvenile detention home one night last week, a mop-haired teenager mixed a palmful of tooth powder with a few drops of water and scrawled a message on the wall. Quote, seven lives for my country, 10,000 years for his imperial majesty, the emperor. All right. So that was from the Time magazine, 14 November 1960. His suicide was an act of awabi, and he was a group right wing nationalist. After he committed suicide, a small group of other right-wing nationalists, which his group, the right-wing nationalists, there were only 100 of him, wow. Like, wow. thinkers like him. No. Well, 100 out of the whole population. Wow. So how do we know it was... It was like a Hitler thing. You remember the, the Nazi party was like 100 out of whatever at first. Yeah. You know? How do we know it was an act of Owabi versus a... A regular suicide. Well, no, a wabi, a wabi. That is the term. It's it. The, a wabi basically means killing yourself and then doing it like leaving a message like this. I don't know. Oh, this is like okay, Japanese. Because he left yeah. the message. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, okay. I, I don't understand the Japanese culture. But a group of right wing nationalists presented the boy's parents with a burial coat and a kimono and belt. Mm. So, uh, actually, this is this is before the murder. This is kind of in his mindset. This is from the Padaku Sun, 23rd, April, 1963. As he ran his hand over the blade, young Yamaguchi thought of the words of his mentor, a fanatic ultra-nationalist, Ben Akao, the head of the Great Japan Patriotic Society. Only a week before, Ben Akao had said, quote, there are many people in Japan who deserve to be killed. Hmm. At this point, he was 17 years old. He was in his father's closet. Remember, his father is a high ranking general. Mm -hmm. He has one of these swords. The sword is called a wakasashi, and it was banned since 1876. And it's not because, you know, how we ban, we want to ban semi-automatic rifles and stuff like Mm -hmm. that. I, I was trying to look it up because I mean, how are you gonna ban a sword? I mean, you, like what and what makes that different than well, another I, kind of samurai sword or something like that that you want on display? Yeah, that's a really good question. So the wakasashi, this is it right here. It is a small sword, about thirteen inches, banned since eighteen seventy six. That's pretty cool, though. They banned this for two reasons: to carry the sword, you can only be a elected official like a you know a police officer or something like that or a constable or whatever the other reason they banned it is because of its shortness because it can be concealed this is actually a secondary weapon so if you think of like a like me overseas for instance or any any um, infantry guy overseas you carry an m4 as your primary weapon and then on your side hip you have a an M9 or whatever, a small pistol. Mm -hmm. So this is like the small pistol. It's easily concealed. You don't know that people have it because it's only 13 inches. It's like hiding a a subway sub in your pocket or something. You know, (laughs) I just think of a trench coat. Easily (laughs) hidden. (laughs) Is that a You want to buy a watch? (laughs) Is that a subway sandwich in your pocket? (laughs) Are you just happy to see me? (laughs) So when it was banned, the sword hunt was performed. And this was when... Different officials went around to all the homes and looked for these swords oh, to wow. make sure no one had them. But obviously, his father was a high-ranking government official. He had one. And that is one of the reasons why the case is, I mean, incredible, in my opinion. So this is the assassin right here. Wow. 
Wow. He he does look like it, you can't really tell in the action shot, yeah. or at mm-hmm. least I, I couldn't. But oh, maybe he's young. Yeah. Them. Yeah. So he plotted this assassination for three days. He he said he had no accomplice. He also said, quote, Asanuma was a traitor who was trying to sell Japan to the communist, end quote. He was a part of the 100 member extreme right wing Great Japan Patriotic Society. That sounds like the uh, Proud Boys or something to me. Remember the ultra right Proud Boys and then like the, the I, Capital Stormers or whatever. I was kind of thinking it. Rem- it reminded me a little bit of like the the fascist yeah. party mm-hmm. in Argentina that oh, was yeah, called yeah, yeah, the yeah. Socialist Party and very oh, confusing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it's like I mean you have Republicans. A lot of the Japanese people are Republicans or even right wing, but these are the the right wing. We're gonna be really fucking right wing. Like right we're gonna wing. make shit happen, type of shit. Remember, right? All the all the forest of right you can go is fascist or yeah. Nazism. Correct. Yeah. The, and ca- the far forest of left socialism. is communism. Yeah. So from the Guardian paper, quote: Eyewitnesses said that Yamagachi was smiling as he was taken into custody. End quote. Wow. So from what I figured out, he was for the United States and our vomiting democracy over everyone i mean he probably saw that as a better alternative if he oh, was a fa- if he was Fuck a fascist yeah. he would be like well yeah. at least it's middle of the road yeah because like i'm gonna get into this a little bit but japan at the time was not it was authoritarian but it, ha- it had looser restrictions it was an empire-based system and the emperor itself was more of a it was like a pope right the pope has the pope is well known well respected but you know, if it comes to war, like, I mean, what the, what's the Pope going to do? Like, he doesn't really make decisions for Italy. You know what I'm saying? No, but for the Vatican, which is its own Well, country. I know, but uh, I know. Yeah. Okay. What well, if the, Va- if someone was, a, I guess if the Vatican was invaded, he'd then make a decision. Then the Swiss Guard takes over. Yeah, but he's not the one that's going to make that decision. So the emperor, although it used to be like this thousands of years ago when he was making the decisions, now at this point it's more of a symbol. Yeah. But there still is an emperor. It's like, like a king, monarchy. Prince Henry or whatever the fuck. You know, he just... Prince Henry. He just holds the wealth. He's not... He, he ain't going to make any decisions. Yeah. Speaking of, I highly recommend you watch The Darkest Hour, Jen, I on Netflix. I want to watch it. That's with John Lithgow, right? It was fabulous. No... I don't think John Lithgow was in it. Oh, no. He plays Winston Churchill in The Crown. What were they thinking of? I don't know who played him, but it was fabulous. I have to watch it. Appointment with Death. Otoya Yamaguchi knew who these people were. There was communist Sanzo Nosaka and the head of the Japanese teachers union, Tankeshi Kobayashi. They deserved to die, for they had betrayed ancient Japanese ideals, but they were not the most important enemy. The man Yamaguchi most wanted to kill was Burley Inajiro Inajiro Asanuma, the chief of the opposition socialist party. For Yamaguchi, Asanuma was the real traitor because his influence reached far into his country's policies. You saw the photo, you saw the giphy, you saw the video. Like he's not just doing this to do it. Like there was some some emotion behind it Mm -hmm. so the first thing that i'm thinking of is like where does that come from where does that like nothing else matters i don't care about anything else i'm about to die for this because in japan you i mean he was going to be executed there's Mm -hmm. no i mean and with a sword it's not like he's getting away so like where does that strong emotion and conviction and just laser focusedness come from like it's got to be something so I, and i'm i'm not 100 percent on the history and i don't want to drudge on it either but i'll let's talk about it a little bit so the u.s occupation of japan 1945 through 1952 millions of japanese protested this alliance with the, with the united states for obvious reasons we just fucking bombed the shit out of them mm-hmm. killed like a million or two million however many people a lot of people this opposition Included socialist, communist, radical student organizations, which was basically him. Organized labor, peace, and anti-nuclear proponents, obviously, since we dropped the nuclear bomb on them. And a wide swath of ordinary citizens who were still haunted by memories of wartime suffering. I've, I've asked this question before, but 
it seemed really stupid to me that Japan would join Hitler in the first place. Mm -hmm. And I know this is kind of off topic, but I was always just really wondered, like, why would they do that? They have no chance of winning. I mean, they have a great naval fleet, obviously, which Pearl Harbor shows. I mean, they, they know how to go around the naval mm -hmm. aspect. But, like, Japan is too small to come up with the U.S., the United States. Like, why would they try to ally with Germany? Did it have to do with, like, a mutual hatred of Russia? Was it, they were, wasn't there, like, a previous conflict? So the Soviet Union was in the process and would have tried to take over Japan from what they thought at the time. Ah. Uh. The research I pulled from here is from Columbia.edu, so Columbia University. It talks about the Depression. It talks about the Depression in Japan, just like in America. Theirs began in 1926 and ended in the mid-30s. Now, if you want to read this, this is from the uh, Columbia.edu website. The great powers not only jealously protected their special economic rights within their colonies and spheres of influence, but sought to bolster their sagging economies through high tariffs, dumping of goods, and other trade manipulation. And because, like, in the U.S. had put on some trade embargoes and a whole bunch of sanctions against Japan before yeah. Japan bombed Pearl, Har bombed Pearl Harbor. Yeah, so there's three things you need for the war you need rubber japan was receiving rubber from the british mm. you need oil japan was receiving oil from the united states and you need steel the oil and steel the united states was their main importer we yeah. exported that to the japanese however roosevelt embargoed all the oil experts to japan and that put a lot of pressure under them and that put them in a in a very difficult situation because there's a a at this point what it's referred to as a quote total war universal war here. truly world war so they're in this war right now and they need these three things they need rubber they need oil and they need steel their supply would last them for 6 months and then be completely exhausted the embargo made it impossible for them to last longer than six months. So this put a lot of pressure on them. They didn't really care about America at the time. It was the Soviet Union. They were on the brink of war with the Soviet Union as well. They were on brink of war with the Soviet Union at the time. So if they can't get the materials needed to fight that war, then there's a lot of stressors. But for, before the bomb... So there's a period before the bomb and after the bomb. They were in the Maijai period. This is a government in Japan controlled by a small ruling group of elder statesmen. So it's not, a, it's not communism and it's not necessarily Big Brother-ish, but it is controlled by like a parliament or, you know, a senate or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A group of 12 people. It's definitely unlike America, which is controlled by... I mean, you, we have different, uh, we get, Three we have branches. different, yeah, we have different houses and branches, but there's one person, you know, that is in charge, basically, even though he may be a puppet. You, you know what I'm saying? This is a group of elders. In 1937, Japan was also in war with China and they hated China, completely hated China. Not only that, so this is 1937, war with China, and then 1941, what happened? December 7th. December 7th, 1941. They, a day that will live in infamy. A date which will live in infamy. That's when they bombed Pearl Harbor, and now they're not only in war with China, but they're also in war with the United States. So with six months of, of materials to get them through... They are pretty much screwed. So they had to make a decision. And that decision was, even though it was ridiculous from what most people would think, was to try to neutralize the United States. And then once they were neutralized, then take over the Soviet Union and then take over the United States. Japan's citizens were completely vowed for the emperor. As you saw, I mean, he wrote in toothpaste, long live the emperor. Much like, But it's interesting because he was so young. Like, he would have been two years old when the war ended. 
Exactly, but that was still the generation where they wanted to fight. That was a generation where the mom gives them the dagger and says, okay. kill yourself yeah. kind of thing. There's there's a guy I want to cover that him and his troop fought after the war ended. They were in the jungles and and just killing locals and stuff like that. And like the war was already over and they would they would fly in his own family members to try to convince him that the war was over and come home and stop his tyranny. Oh, wow. But he was so convinced that this was all just a hoax because the, the, the emperor said when, when like there's no if way we go to war. Up. Yeah. He said, if we go to war, there's only one or two outcomes. If we lose the war, if we lose this war with the United States, then every Japanese person is dead and Japan is completely desolate. No Japanese person is alive. No women, no children. They've fought with bamboo sticks. They're all dead. That is if we lose. If we win, there's a different story. So this guy's family was coming in and saying, we, wait, we what? We, we gave up? We quit? No, that's, that's fake news. There's no way. That's not what the emperor told, told us. That's not our tradition. We did not give up. This has got to be some kind of hoax or ploy to get us to come out to kill us. So that's what, that is the mindset. To finish this up, this is 2010, obviously. There's the guy. This is a small group of right-wing nationalists in Japan. They're still carrying on the tradition. You see the photo of Otoya Yamaguchi placed at the center of the stage. And this is at, this is actually, this is where it happened. Yeah. This is the, wow. This is the same spot. I don't know how they got access to this shit. I mean, I, Hmm. You know, maybe they went uh, through the so right channels. Maybe they just ran up or, there. Fucking who knows? Or because Japan's a democracy and they can do that type of shit. No, I, I, I mean, know. maybe yeah, but I I don't know. But this is the exact spot here, the Habaya Public Hall. This was on uh, Tuesday. This was 2010. This was the 50th anniversary. Wow. There were only 20 members involved. Now this is a various right wing organizations, and I'm pulling this from the Tokyo Reporter right here. It says, quote, Asanuma was a traitor to his country 50 years ago. And this is what the right wing nationalists say. And today we have numerous traitors in Japan, said Takashi Fukunawa, a, represent a representative of the right wing group, Daya Nippon Akutu, as he stood in front of his blue sound truck in the hall's parking lot. Quote, for example, former or quote, for example, Aichiro Ozawi and the prime minister are traitors to their country. We want to send them a message, end quote. So this was 10 years ago, 11 years ago. And you see that he still got support. So this guy, Otoya, the assassin, he is martyrized. Yeah. And for a lot of people, he's martyrized. Because, I mean, Japan doesn't want to be communist. Uh, yeah, but, uh, you don't yeah. have to be like a, a right wing, I don't want to say like extremist, but you don't have to be extremely on the, that side of things yeah. to just be anti-communist. You know what I mean? Yeah, because his... His, uh, the assassination did start a lot of protest and it started getting people riled up. I'm telling you that right now. I mean, you, you basically killed the leader of the socialist party with a freaking sword. Holy shit. I mean, there, there are so many political assassinations out there, but with a sword, oh my God, that is so different it's so like personal it yeah. sends a message it sends not only a message that we don't want to be communist china it also sends a message that you know we're still the japanese cult we still have the japanese tradition the culture the you know the bonded through steel the sword mm -hmm. you know live by the sword die by the sword type of mindset like i mean i i think it's very powerful you may not agree with his stance on things, but shit, man. I mean, to, he had some guts. 17-year-old threw his whole life away. I mean, he knew he was going to get executed. He knew he was going to probably disgrace his family. Luckily, or he made them really proud, Yeah, he, I, I believe he did make them really proud. And I believe he 
made a lot of the country proud from what the sentiment was from what I got from the newspaper. Mm. It's interesting that this is one of the few assassinations where all of, I think like any major assassination in history, whether you're talking about like the any of the Kennedys or you know, I think like that where it's a defining moment in history. Yeah. And you think about like, well, what could have been had a JFK or an RFK survived or, you know, like the, the, it was almost yeah. those assassinations were terrible in what maybe outcomes could have been for those countries. This is, I think, the first assassination. I'm trying to rack my brain for anything else. and Nothing else is coming to mind where the assassination maybe did help the country in a positive way or as, as perceived at least by the the this party um from not going into communism like what if that was the defining moment like if that guy continued his speech continued forward with an election or whatever and japan became a communist nation yeah think about like how different they would be today we wouldn't be allies, you know, all those things. And I'm trying to think of another situation where it, it, oh, I could point to something similar, but this is one of the few times where it's like, wow, that, that was a defining moment in history that perhaps changed course for Japan to be a democracy. And maybe that was a good thing. I don't know. Not yeah. to say that someone's death was good, but you know what I'm trying to say? I mean, I think it was good if he's going to be communism. Anyway, that is the uh, episode. Hope you guys like that. Go to talkmurder.com. See all those photos, videos, and all my sources on talkmurder.com. We got some great stories coming up. We got some uh, requests coming up. And barreling on through to 300. For the next episode, we're covering a real-life character who has been betrayed in some Rob Zombie movies, or at least one. I don't know if it was accurate betrayal but his name definitely and we call him <laughs> dr satan oh so we're going to be covering him i also got some other good ones i've got uh i'm going to talk about what it would be like if your cheating husband throws you from an airplane <gasps> and one story but anyway this talk murder me i hope you guys like it subscribe if you're not and we record every sunday and you can Join us. We live stream. We chat with you guys. That's sundaytalkmore.com slash join. And you can be part of that. But if that's all, then my name is John sitting here with Jen and Nicole. Until next time, good night, you lovely, lovely people.